All right, we're going to start off our house review with House Targaryen. Uh, I know this is one of the favorite houses of the people that I game with, and I'm sure it's it's favored by a lot of people around the world. Um, so it's a good place to start, especially since you've got Daenerys right at the, right there on the cover of the box. So we start with the house card. Now the house card seems to be the same for all of them, just with their symbol, uh, their motto. Uh, but on the back, just gives you the rules. You may include non-loyal Targaryen cards in your deck. Uh, you must include at least 12 loyal cards of your house in your deck. That's about it. So the first card that we come to in the, the house is Daenerys herself. Uh, seven gold with the Intrigue and Power icons, five strength, Lady and Stormborn keywords. She has the Insight ability, which according to the rule book, after you win a challenge in which this character participated, you may draw one card. Uh, and while Daenerys Targaryen is standing, each character participating on an opponent's side in a challenge against you gets minus one strength. So that is really not bad, and, and she is not a joke anyway at five strength, so uh, that's pretty good with her insight, combined with some of the other cards I think we're going to see in this deck, it's going to make her very nasty, such as Viserion. Two gold, warfare and power icons, dragon and hatchling keywords, cannot have attachments, and each Stormborn character you control gains stealth. So once again we come back to Daenerys, which is I think the only Stormborn character in the deck. So now she has stealth while Viserion is out. And given her insight, that's potentially just a free drawn card. Then we have Rigel. Three gold, warfare and intrigue icons. Three strength, dragon and hatching keywords, no attachments. Reaction, after you win a challenge in which a Stormborn character you control is participating, choose and stand a Stormborn character. So that's going to let Daenerys participate in both of her potential challenges. She can do Intrigue and Power. So if Rigel's out, she's going to definitely get to do both. If Assyrian's out, she's going to have Stealth, potentially drawing you two cards in that round. Next we have Drogon. Three gold, Warfare Icon, four strength, Dragon and Hatchling keywords. No attachments, and each Stormborn character you control gains Renown. And according to the rulebook, Renown. After you win a challenge in which this character is participating, you may gain one power on this character. So Daenerys is potentially drawing cards, uh, gaining power, and attacking multiple times in a round with, with the dragon supporting her. I, that is a big change from the first edition of the game. Um, where the dragons themselves, they like beasted each other up. They were either beasted themselves or they beasted each other up. I, I like that they beast up Daenerys here. They help her do things, they give her prestige for doing things. I think that's really cool. Next we have Khal Drogo. Uh, six gold, warfare and power icons, five strength, Dothraki Lord, renown. You may, in addition, you may initiate an additional warfare challenge during the challenges phase. So that's pretty good. Magister Illyrio. Five gold, intrigue, and power icons with four strength. Lord and merchant keywords. Action. Pay two gold to choose and stand a character. Combine him with uh, Cal Drogo. And you're going to get to use Drogo in two warfare challenges. Jorah Mormont. Two gold, warfare and intrigue challenges, uh, challenge icons. Four strength, companion knight keywords, the renowned ability. If Sir Jorah Mormont has three or more betrayal tokens on him, sacrifice him. Forced reaction. After you win uh, after you win a challenge in which Sir Jorah Mormont participated, uh, is participating, place one betrayal token on him. Viserys Targaryen. One gold, one end of the uh, power icon, one strength, lord keyword, interrupt. When Viserys Targaryen leaves play, choose an attachment and discard it from play. Uh, probably what you used to melt over his head. 
Braided Warrior. Two gold, warfare icon. Three strength. Uh, the Dothraki keyword, no attachments except weapon. Handmaiden. Two gold, intrigue and power icons. One strength, ally and companion keywords. Action. Sacrifice a handmaiden to choose and stand a lady character. So you've got all kinds of ways to keep Daenerys standing. And I think that's the key to her keyword. When Daenerys Targaryen is standing, each character participating uh, on an opponent's side in a challenge against you gets minus one strength. And since nothing we've seen that says stand a character says remove them from the challenge, uh, that could be pretty nasty. Because you kneel Daenerys to defend in a challenge. Let's see. Each character is participating in an opponent's side in a challenge against you. So you kneel Daenerys to defend yourself in a challenge, then you sacrifice the Handmaiden, stand Daenerys, and everybody against you is getting minus one strength. And keep in mind, she was five strength to begin with, so. Uh, now we have the Targaryen Loyalist, one gold and a power icon, one strength, ally keyword, marshalling action, kneel Targaryen Loyalist to reduce the cost of the next Targaryen character you marshal this phase by one. Uh, Unsullied, four gold, one, uh, warfare icon, and the power icon, three strength, army keyword, no attachment except weapon, and while the Unsullied is attacking, each defending character gets minus one strength. Now we have Drogo's Arak, two gold, attachment, weapon, Darth Dothraki character only, attached character gets plus two strength. If the attached character is Khal Drogo, he does not kneel when declared as an attacker in the first warfare challenge you initiate each round. So, given that Drogo gives you two warfare challenges, when used in conjunction, this guarantees he'll be able to participate in both of them. I also like how the cards are different. Attachments look very different from character cards. And it's more than just what they did in the first edition where the background on an attachment was like chainmail or whatever. These are very different, entirely different styles, symbols in different places. Except for the gold, you know, the things that you need the, on every card are in the same place. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like the differentiating of the types. Makes it easy to pick out what's an attachment at a glance. Now we have Plaza of Punishment. And again, still different from the attachment doesn't have the upper part of the uh, border. Uh, but the Plaza of Punishment costs three gold, has the Ask to Pork keyword. After you win a power challenge, kneel Plaza of Punishment to choose a character without attachments. Until the end of the phase, that character gets minus two strength and is killed if its strength is zero. Uh, combine that with Daenerys, that's minus three strength. And there are, I don't think there's a whole lot. I, I think that's going to wipe out most most things, aside from the, the more powerful characters and whatnot. Uh, so that's, that's pretty nasty. And since it's everything, you could potentially wipe out uh, an entire attacking force. Uh, now we have the Dothraki C, one gold, the Essos keyword, reaction. After you win a power challenge, sacrifice Dothraki Seed to put a Dothraki character into play from your hand. At the end of the phase, if that card is still in play, return it to your hand. It cannot be saved. Illyrio's Estate. Zero gold. The Pentos keyword. Limited. Marshalling action. Neil Illyrio's Estate to reduce the cost of the next Targaryen character you marshal this phase by one. So I think there's another card. You have the Loyalist, the Targaryen Loyalist. So you potentially are reducing Targaryen cards by two by combining these, and I think there are two of these. It seems every house comes with 19 unique cards and one that's a double. And in this one it is Illyrio's Estate. Then we have Dracarys. Kneel a dragon character or Daenerys Targaryen to choose a participating character. Until the end of the phase, that character gets minus four strength and is killed if its strength is zero. So, 
When using conjunction with some other card, Daenerys, that's potentially minus five strength. And I don't think we saw a single card in this deck that could stand up to that. That would wipe out any individual card in the Targaryen deck. So that's nasty. Uh, finally, we have Fire and Blood. One gold event, challenges action. Choose a unique Targaryen character in your dead pile and shuffle it back into your deck. If that character is a hatchling, you may put it into play instead. Oh, no, I'm sorry, there's one more. Waking the Dragon. Well, how could we forget Waking the Dragon? Zero cost event, action, choose and stand a unique Targaryen character you control. At the end of the phase, if that character is still in play, return it to your hand. So that is House Targaryen. Uh, know what I like about them? Uh, they've got a lot of neat tricks. You know, a lot of things where you want to be standing somebody, in a lot of ways to stand somebody. Uh, they're really good at intrigue and power challenges but could hold their own in warfare. So they're pretty well rounded. No, I think I think this is a good solid deck. I don't think there's anything that I consider overpowering. Um, nope, I think they did a good job. Did a very good job on House Targaryen. So I'm gonna go get this video uploading and do a video on the Night's Watch.